Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, yesterday the Minister for Planning, uh, in a media statement, mentioned that there were around 700 submissions to the new planning, to the to the planning and design law review, including 40, 40 submissions from councils across the state. First of all, I'd just like to congratulate the Minister for undertaking the review and also the panel he assembled to actually oversee the review. Mr. Speaker, I wasn't surprised. Uh, to see that many people actually make submissions to this review, because planning and development is a space which often has a lot of competing interest and is often contested by different views. It's a vexed area, vexed area of public policy, and getting the balance right is a difficult task. In some ways, there are two, two groups in, in the area of planning and in terms of planning and development. There are people who are investing for their home, place to raise their family. It's an integral part of where they live and parts of their communities. Then we have the other group of investors, people who want to ger generate an income for themselves, usually some type of developer, uh, some type of developer. Both groups are investors, so we need robust processes to ensure we get the right outcomes. Mr Speaker, the objectives of the last round of planning and development reforms were twofold. One was to actually create certainty in the system. In other words, the assessment process of development People knew what the rules were, and this, the rules were quite clear for both residents and also investors. The second part was clarity, in other words, the community understanding what role it played in the development process, and that was identified as playing a key role in the preparation of policy development. In other words, the, po the community puts the policies in conjunction with councils and the government put the policies in place, and then you have an independent process to assess applications two worthy ob objectives. These objectives were meant to reduce the amount of conflict in the system. Personally, I don't believe we have quite achieved that balance and conflict still exists. And I'd like to demonstrate that through a case study in my own electorate. Currently, it's a process for a code amendment uh, to change a neighbourhood uh, zone into an employment zone. And that in itself is a difficult thing to explain to me what an employment zone means. But it's essentially a commercial zone. The code amendment has been initiated by a proponent on behalf of a group of investors, which is, and there's nothing wrong with that. The role of the local council has or has not, the role the council has, has or has not played in the process has raised significant concerns in the community affected by the proposed code amendment. It should be noted that the council is not the final decision maker and the minister is. The issue has arisen is about community engagement or consultation about the proposed code amendment. It is clear that the proponent is responsible for all investigations and undertaking community consultation. This will form a part of the report to the Minister. The Council have argued they have no role in engaging the views of the community on this matter. In fact, they have gone one step further and stated they are prohibited from engaging the community on the proposed code amendment. They blame the State Government for their inability to engage the community on this critical issue. To date, the Council have made two decisions on this matter without any engagement with its own community to form its own opinion. Firstly, they have supported the initiation of the process of a Code Amendment and more recently indicated that if the proponent meets the technical requirements of the Code Amendment, they will support the change. But no one seems to be asking the question, is the proposed development in the right location, as distinct from doing the right, doing the right process? If the Council are correct in their interpretation of the law, it raises important issues. When does the community get the opportunity to have their say in the development of policy as the planning reforms had intended? Who speaks on behalf of local residents, if not the Council? And is, it, is a privatised or outsourced engagement process desirable? And does it give residents an effective say? If the Council are right, then the law needs to be changed. If the Council responds to date, is wrong, it has effectively left this, the, this community without a real voice in this process, in what is a very important issue. What redress do the community have for this failure, if that, to, that is what is found? Mr Speaker, uh, now the community has to find its own way through the whole process to ensure they are heard. While the community consultation undertaken by the proponents is desirable, I do not believe it is sufficient for public policy decisions to be based upon it. Mr Speaker, in this case, the community feels disempowered by the process to date and it is up to the Council to rectify that.